What's going on, everybody? We're moving on with lesson 8.3. 8.3 is going to be on what we call trig ratios. Okay, so a quick do now. Uh, find the measure of the missing side lengths of these special right triangles. So just a quick review um, from what we did in lesson 8.2. So we see here that we, in this one, we have a 30, 60, 90, right? We see our short side is 7, our long side is seven times the square root of three. Remember on an, a 30, 60, 90, the hypotenuse, which means this is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always two times the short side. So if the short side seven, two times the short side would give us 14. Okay, over here we have a 45, 45, 90. The legs are congruent because it's an isosceles triangle, which means that this is the hypotenuse. And remember the ratio of the hypotenuse is always whatever the legs are times the square root of two. So since the legs are seven, the hypotenuse is seven times the square root of two. Okay, so just a quick example, a review of what we did in 8.2. Okay, today, ooh, just like always, I always forget this, but remember, go into Canvas, right? Canvas here, uh, Chapter 8 notes, the notes for this 8.3 in the Chapter 8 uh, slides, the 8.3 PowerPoint slides, they are up and available right there. Okay, um, with trig, we use a thing called theta. Theta is a symbol. It is used to represent angles. It's just another way of using a variable. Just like how we use X or Y, we use theta. Theta is a Greek letter. So just like how we use X and Y because they're letters, they're variables, theta is a Greek letter. We use it for a, a variable. However, uh, theta is always used to represent angles or the given angle. So theta is going to be a variable for angles. Okay, labeling sides of right triangles in relationship to theta. Okay, so if this is theta, we have three uh, side lengths. They will call, be called obviously the hypotenuse, the adjacent side, and the opposite side. The hypotenuse is always the side opposite from the right angle. That's nothing new. We already know that. The adjacent side is the side touching the given angle theta, right? So if we take a look, here is theta. It's talking about this angle, right? Adjacent is touching theta. Obviously, hypotenuse is also touching theta, but the hypotenuse is the hypotenuse. It will never be the adjacent. And opposite, just like always, opposite is not touching the given angle or theta. Also, opposite, if we draw an arrow away from theta, it points at the opposite. I always like to use arrows to represent opposite. Okay, so you need to know how to label your side lengths, the hypotenuse, the adjacent, or the opposite. Okay, notice theta can change places. So, for example, right, if we crossed that out. Oops, sorry, I meant to have the pencil, right? If this was theta, then this side would be the opposite. This side would be the adjacent. The hypotenuse is still the hypotenuse, okay? So know that theta changes, uh, which could change your opposite and adjacent. Okay, you try. Pause the video, think about what's the opposite, what's the adjacent, and what's the hypotenuse. Okay, hopefully you paused, hopefully you did it on your own. Um, we see that here's our theta, opposite is away from, adjacent is touching theta and the right angle is always pointing at the hypotenuse okay over here again the right angle always points away towards the hypotenuse right if this is theta pointing away is going to be opposite and this side is touching uh, theta so that's adjacent over here find the hypotenuse first the right angle points at the hypotenuse right this side is touching theta so that's adjacent and away from it is opposite, okay? So this is really important. You need to know how to label uh, your side lengths when you're talking about opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Okay, for trig ratios, we write ratios as a fraction. All ratios are is comparing certain sides to each other. So the three ratios that we have are called sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine, cosine, and tangent get abbreviated. So sine, a short abbreviation, we just drop the E, it's S-I-N. Cosine, we drop the I-N-E, it's C-O-S. And tangent, we drop the G-E-N-T, and it's abbreviated to tan. So we have sine, cosine, and tangent, but they're uh, abbreviated, okay? Sine is always going to be a ratio of the side lengths opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is always going to be the ratio where we compare adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tangent is always going to be a ratio where we compare opposite over adjacent. Okay, these are the trig ratios that we will use today, sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, here's just a visual, a visual representation. If this here is theta, it's kind of hard to see, right? This angle here is theta every time, right? Theta, theta, theta. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse. So, uh, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, this is just a visual representation 
of the three ratios. Okay, a way to remember sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, I have known this for who knows how long, ever since I uh, took geometry. So ka toa, right? So S O H refers to sine opposite over hypotenuse, right? So ka cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And toa tangent equals opposite over adjacent, right? So so ka toa. That is an easy way for you to remember sine, cosine, and tangent of which uh, side lengths are in which ratio. Okay, sine, cosine, and tangent along with theta. Sine, cosine, and tangent are all relationships, or sorry, are all ratios in relation to theta. Remember, theta is the measure of the angle. So you will always have theta or the angle next to whatever ratio you are using. So if you look back, right, it's just sine equals opposite adjacent. The true actual way that you should write it is sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent theta equals opposite over adjacent, right? Uh, in this lesson, we are given theta, so you're going to write the measure of the angle next to uh, your ratio. But in the next lesson, you're not going to know what the angle is, and you're going to have to write theta. Okay. Okay. So label the side lengths as opposite adjacent hypotenuse in relationship to theta. Then make a ratio of sine, cosine, and tangent of these uh, triangles. All right. So remember, if this is our theta, that means this. All right. Right angle always points at the hypotenuse. Opposite is always away from theta, adjacent is always next to, right? So I would write, if I'm going to now create each of these ratios, I would say that sine theta is equal to, remember, sine is opposite over adjacent, so opposite is 3, or sorry, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be 3 over hypotenuse, which is 5, right? Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so adjacent is 4, hypotenuse is 5, and then tangent theta, right? Tangent of this angle theta is opposite over adjacent. So opposite is three, adjacent is four. Okay, and then if I change colors, so that way we don't get confused, here is our theta, right? The right angle always points at the opposite away from, um, sorry, the right angle always points at the hypotenuse, I apologize. Uh, away from theta is always opposite and next to theta is always adjacent, right? So if we write our ratios, sine, theta, sine is always uh, opposite over hypotenuse, so opposite is 6, hypotenuse is 10. Cosine theta, cosine is always adjacent over hypotenuse, so adjacent is 8, hypotenuse is 10. And tangent theta, tangent is always opposite over adjacent, opposite is 6, sorry, equals, opposite is 6, adjacent is 8. So that's how we would set up these ratios, right? Now this is uh, just a way for you to practice of how to set up your ratios. Uh, the whole point of knowing these things is that these uh, equations will help you find missing side lengths, okay? So in this example, now we are given the angle measure, right? We know what theta is now. We know what one side length is, but we don't know what the other one is, right? So when we're setting up our problems, label your side lengths as opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Determine what side is given to you, determine what side you need to find, and then decide which ratio you will use. So if this is our angle, right? This is our angle, we'll call that theta. What side is given to you? We see that the hypotenuse is given to us. What side do you need to find? This is our X. We see that that is the opposite side. So then we decide which ratio will we use, sine, cosine, or tangent. Well, we have the hypotenuse. We're looking for opposite. So think about which ratio uses opposite and hypotenuse. If you need to, scroll back up. Right? We see that sine uses opposite and hypotenuse. So we know we're going to use sine. So we're going to set up our equation here as sine. Remember, we you were doing sine theta, but this time we actually know what theta is. So we just write sine 63 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. We don't know what opposite is, so that would be x over hypotenuse is 50. This is how we would set up our equation and solve. We're not going to work on solving yet. We're going to do that in the next slide, but this is how we're going to set up our equation. All right? Remember, theta always goes next to your ratio sine, cosine, or tangent, and then you decide which uh, side lengths you need to determine which ratio you need to use.
Okay, here's the pattern, here is how we solve. If X is on top of the ratio, like this, we multiply both sides by the number on bottom, right? J just like how solving for any variable. If we have X, we wanna solve for X. We're dividing by seven, so to get rid of it, we multiply by seven, and we multiply both sides by seven. So these cancel out, and you end up getting X is equal to seven times sine 64. And then you just do this to find out what X is. If X is on the bottom of the ratio, we switch places with X and the cosine, sine, or tangent, or whatever it is, all right? So we switch places, and then we're gonna divide. So if X goes over here, that means it's gonna be X is equal to, and now cosine 43 is gonna go on bottom, 10 divided by cosine 43. Okay, that is the uh, pattern of how you solve for these problems, of how you solve for X, solve for your missing side. If X is on top, you take the bottom number and you multiply it, if X is on bottom, you flip flop X and the sine, cosine, tangent, whatever ratio you're using, and then you divide. Okay, so here, now we're going to do some examples. Okay, oh, I lied. We're not going to do these examples yet. Make sure you're using a calculator, right? Sine, cosine, and tangent are really long equations. So long, I don't even know what it is. Or, excuse me, I don't know how to do it. So make sure... Make sure that uh, you use a calculator, right? I, I've been uh, just giving you the Google calculator, right? Notice you have sine, cosine, and tangent here on the Google calculator ready to go right here. You can use those. Okay, when I'm doing these equations, I'm going to just use the calculator that's in my hand. That way I don't have to keep flipping back and forth between the Google calculator to show you. Okay, so here's our first example. Use the given angle. Remember, the given angle is our theta. Right? We have to label uh, what sides we have and what side do we want to know. So we have 15, which we know is the adjacent side. So we have adjacent. What information do we need? We need to find X. We see that that is the opposite. Right? So which trig function are we going to use? Are we going to use sine, so, cosine, ka, uh, tangent, toa? We have opposite and adjacent, which means we're going to use tangent. So we set up our trig ratio. We know we're using tangent, so we set it up. Tangent theta, remember, but we know what theta is. So tangent 25 equals opposite over adjacent. Opposite is x, adjacent is 15. Okay, our x is on top. That means we uh, multiply both sides by 15 to find x. So we end up getting x is equal to 15 times tangent 25. And again, just plug that into your calculator. I have a calculator in my hand. I know you can't see it, but 15 times tangent 25. And it gives me uh, x is equal to 6.99, right? Most of the problems will always have you round to the nearest tenth, right? Nine is big enough to round up, which means that this would round up to x equals 7.0. And that would be our answer there. Okay, more examples, once again, right? Remember your angle is theta, right? Label what you have, you have opposite, you have adjacent. Opposite and adjacent means you're gonna use tangent. So you set it up as tangent theta, which is tangent 27, equals opposite is x over adjacent is 10. We're, x is on top, so we're gonna multiply by 10. All right, those cancel out and you get x is equal to 10 times tangent 27. And again, just plug that into a calculator. And plugging that into a calculator, you end up getting 5.09, blah, 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 blah. But round to the nearest tenth, it becomes x is equal to 5.1. Okay, using a different color, right? We know that this is our theta. We see that this is the opposite, but now x is the hypotenuse. Okay, so we set this up. Opposite and hypotenuse, that means we're going to use sine. So we set it up, sine of the angle, which is 46, is equal to opposite, which is 8, over adjacent, which is x. Now remember, x is on bottom. That rule says that we flip and divide. So we switch places, x is equal to 8, divided by sine 46. And again, you plug that into a calculator, 8 divided by sine 46. I know you can't see me doing it, but we end up getting x is equal to 11.12, 
blah, 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 blah. We have to round to the nearest tenth. It rounds up to 11.1 is our answer there. Okay, and that's all I have there. Uh, make sure you bring lots of questions with you. Have a great day. Go Mustangs.